Hey guys, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Air Travel Sling 2. And this is really the first sling bag that has made me stop and wonder if I could switch to using this type of bag full time. I've been using this for about a week and in this video I'm gonna be talking about what it's been like to test this out and why it may be a compelling alternative for fellow backpack enthusiasts that have been curious about switching to a sling bag. In this video, we're also gonna be taking a quick look at the updated version of the Air Dot Kit, so lots of great stuff to cover. Before jumping in, I wanna thank Air for sending the items for me to test out. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, I really like the overall aesthetic. This has the same modern and minimal vibe that we've seen in a lot of Air's other products. This is a part of their travel collection, so it has a similar aesthetic to something like the Flight Pack 2 or the Travel Duffel, which we looked at a while back. It's almost like a mini version of that bag, and I think that works very well. It's gonna blend in nicely into a lot of different environments, whether you're traveling or walking around the city or wearing this with a nicer outfit. And then moving on to the materials, on the exterior you have a very rugged 1680D ballistic nylon that feels like it's going to hold up very well over the longer term. This also offers a nice amount of weather resistance and then you have some well protected YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside you have a few handles, one on the top and one on the side of the bag. So if you want to carry this like a briefcase you have this thicker handle at the top that has this soft seatbelt like material. It's really comfortable to hold even when the bag is a little bit more packed out. And then you also have this slightly more simple loop at the top that has the same seatbelt material but it's a lot thinner so this is going to be great for maybe hanging the bag up when it's not in use. And then on the bottom you have a few compression straps that are going to be great for attaching something like a jacket or a tripod. Really love the versatility that these add and the buckles here are very easy to open up and close so whatever you want to rest on here you can just tighten it around that item very easily. And then if the sling bag isn't quite as full you can actually use these to compress the bag down and give it a slimmer overall silhouette. And then moving into the capacity the sling bag comes in at about 12 liters which is a pretty nice everyday carry bag size and this is one of the things that really appealed to me about this compared to many of the other slings that I've seen on the market is just that extra bit of capacity. I normally find sling bags to be just a little bit limiting in what they can hold so I like that this gives me some extra space without becoming as overwhelming as a full-fledged day bag and even when it's a little bit more packed out it still maintains a really slim silhouette making it great for navigating crowded areas or jumping onto public transit. Taking a look at the carrying strap, so far this has been really comfortable to wear. I like how the strap has been implemented here. It has plenty of padding. It's really soft right out of the box and has this meshy material on the inside to help prevent moisture from building up. And then I also really like that this has a little bit more width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. The style here reminds me a lot of Air's other backpack straps. And this is an area where many sling bags that I've tried out struggle. They usually have thinner straps that don't offer much padding or breathability. So really like to see this style included here. And then this shoulder strap can actually be used in two ways. You can wear this over your shoulder, kind of like you would with a backpack, or you can actually throw it over your back like a full sling bag. And it works well in both of those modes. It's really been quite comfortable. And then on the strap, you also have this quick release buckle, which is really great for getting the bag on and off easily and not you know, losing the length of the strap if you have it adjusted exactly how you want it. This also feels really durable. And then moving into the back paneling, you don't have a ton of breathability here. I know one of the benefits of using a smaller sling bag is that you don't have to worry about back sweat quite as much as you would with something like a backpack. Since this is a larger sling bag, I noticed that when I packed it out and wore it for a longer period of time, my back would tend to get a little bit sweatier. So it would have been nice to see, you know, some elevated padding here to create some ventilation, but so far it's still been comfortable. And then I like that this suitcase pass-through has been included here to allow you to rest this on your luggage handle while traveling to save some weight on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, I really like all the pockets that have been included throughout the bag. This is definitely one of the things that stood out to me for this one versus other sling bags is just that extra bit of flexibility with how you can organize everything. And so on the front, you have a larger quick access pocket. I like that because this has the aqua guarded zips, it gives you these pull tabs to make it a little bit easier to open the bag up. And then on the inside, you have plenty of space. There's really a lot of volume in this front pocket, giving you plenty of flexibility if you want to store larger items. So jumping into what I currently have here, first up, I just tossed in my GoPro. 
And then I also have my little side-by-side -side pouch that has a few masks and my hand sanitizer. And then on the inside, you have just some larger slip pockets that are gonna add some organization so that everything isn't floating around freely. So on this one on the left, I just tossed in my Blue Pop portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank. These compartments have plenty of elasticity, which I really like to hold some of those bulkier items. And then on the right, you have a similarly sized pocket where I just tossed in a lightning cable to charge my tablet and my phone. And then I also threw in a little power brick. And then the last thing that you have in this compartment is a little lanyard with a clip that's gonna be a great spot to attach something like your keys or a multi-tool. At the top, you have a really nice quick access pocket and this has a well-protected zipper. I like that this has the zipper garage to help keep water out. And then you have this locking style zipper that has to be flipped up so that you can actually open it. And this is an area where air always does a great job with these top quick access pocket. There's plenty of volume for anything that you need to grab a little bit more quickly. And so what I tossed in here at the moment is just my Ray-Ban sunglasses with their case. And then I also tossed in my Apple AirPods. But even with those items in there, there's plenty of leftover capacity. There's no sort of fleece lining on the inside, which would have been nice to see as that's something that Air's been adding to some of their other bags, but it still works nicely. And I love the amount of space that this offers. And then before taking a look at the main compartment, one thing that I wanted to call out, which is a huge benefit of sling bags in my opinion, is how easily you can grab anything from these compartments while you're still wearing the bag. You can just swing it around and then because of the orientation of all of the pockets, you can grab whatever you need quickly. So whether it's your sunglasses or a power bank, and this is one of the things that, you know, is a little bit lost when you're wearing a backpack. You kind of have to take the bag off or some bags like the CPL24 allow you to swing the bag around and some of the compartments are oriented in a way that you can reach in, but it's still hard to get into that main compartment and they're just not meant to be used like that. So that's one of the big benefits of moving to a sling bag. It's very convenient and then you can just throw the bag back around your back when you're ready to go. And so Moving into the main compartment, you have a nice wide opening zipper. One of the things that I thought was interesting here is that there's no aqua guard on this main zipper. You have it on the front, and it would have been nice to see that same level of weather resistance here. I know it can be a little bit harder to open the zippers, but again, because your laptop is in this compartment, it might be nice to have that extra peace of mind. Regardless, because of the inverted coils, it still feels pretty well protected and it does make it very easy to open this zipper up. It's really smooth. And then on the inside, you have plenty of space. This is really what makes it very easy to transition from a backpack to this type of sling bag is this extra bit of capacity. You have plenty of volume, even for bulkier items. With the items that I have in here, you can see that there's still a little bit of space if I wanted to toss in maybe a jacket or an umbrella. And so taking a look at the items that I currently have in here, first up at the top, I have my DJI Mavic Mini case. And then next to that on the side, I tossed in my 20 ounce water bottle that you've seen in a lot of my other daily bag videos. I was a little bit sad that there's no good way to store this outside of the bag and that this is in the same compartment as the laptop, but it's able to fit comfortably. And so far this hasn't fallen over or anything like that. And then down at the bottom, the last thing that I tossed in is the Air Slim Pouch, which has some of these smaller accessories that I normally like to carry with me that I didn't want floating around. And then beyond that, you just have a nice amount of volume here for any other items that you wanna to toss in. If you have some folders or something like my standing desk would have fit in here comfortably, maybe some camera gear. So I really like that this comes up a decent amount. And then you also have a lot of internal organization if you don't really wanna carry a pouch and you want everything to have its own spot so that you can grab it easily. So I love the pocket layout that they have here. There's a nice variety of sizes and styles. So starting off all the way on the back, you have this kind of quick access style pocket that we saw in the Active Collection recently. So we saw this in the Fit Pack 3, this deep pocket that you can just reach in from the top and grab. There's no sort of internal organization here, just a large space. The only thing that I tossed in here is a little case that has some Band-Aids on the inside and some ointment for whenever I scratch myself up. And then next to that, you have a few larger and deeper slip pockets. So this is gonna be great for something like notebooks, or you know, larger uh, laptop chargers or things like that. Currently what I have here in the left is my Kindle e-reader. And then on the right, you have a very similarly sized compartment where I just tossed in a little Field Notes notebook. Moving up along the front of the bag, you have a nice zippered pocket here. This is again, a little bit larger and taller. It's gonna be a great spot for holding smaller items that you don't want floating around. So dongles, adapters, maybe some memory cards or change. I don't really have anything in here because most of those items are in the air slim pouch that I had at the bottom, but still nice to have this. And I like the additional depth to give you some extra flexibility with what you can store. And then on the other side, you have some more pockets. You have some slim ones for something like a pen or a stylus, which is what I currently have here. 
And then next to that, you have another just elastic slip pocket. I like the elasticity here. It kind of molds around those larger items. And then in this pocket, I just tossed in my Apple Magic Mouse. So just a really nice organizational layout here. It's gonna be very easy to find anything that you need. And then on the other side, you have a few larger slip pockets. So on the front here, you have this very thin pocket. It's still secured by this Velcro strap to kind of help keep anything in place that you might have there. This is a larger pocket. So currently what I have here is my iPad mini and that kind of gets swallowed up by the compartment. This is also gonna be a good spot to hold a 10 or 11 inch tablet or maybe even some documents that you wanna just keep separate from everything else. So I do wish that this was maybe a little bit more padded if you wanted to use it for a tablet, but still nice to have that separation from everything else in the compartment. And then the last piece in this main area is the laptop sleeve. And so a really nice implementation here. It's a little bit more padded. It offers protection for a laptop that's up to 16 inches. Currently what I have here is my 13 inch MacBook Pro, but you can see there's plenty of leftover space on all sides. And then I like that the back of this compartment has this soft fleece lining to help prevent against scratches. We've seen these in a lot of Air's other bags recently. Unfortunately, the front of the compartment doesn't have that same level of protection. So that would have been nice to see, but it's still nice that it's included on the back. And so pulling my device out, it's very easy to get it in and out of the compartment. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. And so this comes up a decent amount. If you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in here okay. And the bottom of the compartment isn't really suspended off the ground. So you wanna be a little bit more careful when you place the sling bag down. It does have some padding, so it's not completely exposed, but it still would have been nice for that to be pulled up just a little bit, similar to what we saw in something like the Day Pack 2. But regardless, a nice implementation here. It feels like my device is gonna be well protected while I'm running around throughout the day. And then with this bag a little bit emptier, one thing that I wanted to call out is you can see that this can flatten down a good amount, but it's still not gonna be quite as packable as many of the other sling bags that we've looked at on the channel. So something like the Dayfair sling, or the Kelso sling from Track. Those are some of my favorite options for tossing into a larger travel bag when I'm on the go because they pack down so small. So that's one of the benefits that I've normally seen with slings. This can still kind of work, but as you can see, it's bulkier even when it's empty. So it's gonna add some weight. You probably don't wanna toss this into a travel backpack. So more of a good companion to use with something like a rolling luggage. Regardless though, I just really love the amount of space and organization offered in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag. It really works very well. And if you're somebody who's a backpack user that's curious to switch to a sling and you wanna keep some of the benefits of both worlds, and this is really gonna be one of the best options to check out. And then taking a look at the DOP kit too, Overall, the aesthetic here feels pretty similar. It's been updated and streamlined a little bit, so it matches the updates that Air made to the other bags in their travel line collection. And it looks great in my opinion. This has always been one of the best looking dot kits. I've used the original for a few years now, and I'm really glad that they didn't change it up too much. And as far as the materials, it has the same ballistic nylon exterior, great YKK zippers all throughout. This is definitely a pouch that you're gonna be able to use on its own, you know, to just carry your toiletries around or even as a tech pouch, it'll keep everything well protected. It's offered in this all black coloring and the heathered gray, which is the version that I had on the original. And then as far as the sizing, it's pretty similar overall. I have the two here so you can get a good idea of the sizing and the aesthetic changes. So there's just been some slight upgrades to the zippers and things like that. But as far as the sizing, the new version feels a little bit bigger for some reason. You know, the dimensions are close. And of course, this is packed out at the moment. This is empty. And you can still kind of collapse this down when it's not as full, but it feels like it expands out just a little bit more, giving you some extra flexibility if you're somebody who likes to carry more toiletries while you're traveling. I usually try to keep things pretty minimally, but I like that this is flexible enough that I can use it when I need to, and if not, just kind of stuff it into a bag when I have a little bit less capacity. So as far as the handles, Air has included this handle on one side of the bag, which wasn't on the original. You have the same handle on the back that's great for just kind of carrying it. Wish that there was a way to hang this a little bit more. Air's travel kit has that extra hook. So this is really a great dot kit to just place on a, a sink or a countertop or something to be able to reach anything that you need easily. And then just to do a few more size comparisons because I've always found the sizing of this pretty interesting. It's not a super small dot kit, but it's not super big either. It falls kind of in the middle. So here I have Wandered's toiletry kit that we looked at recently. This is the medium version of their dot kit, which is one of the more minimal ones that I've tested out. And when I'm going for ultra light travels is one of my go-tos. You can see that the dot kit from Air is a little bit bigger than this. It's gonna have just more depth 
and size overall. So this may be a little bit too minimal for many other people, but you know, it's still a good option to consider when you wanna save space. And then I also have the Heim Planet Dop Kit here, which is another one that's very similar category to the Air Dop Kit. You can see they're pretty close in size. This one isn't quite as flexible as the Dop Kit, and I like some of the additional organizational options that Air has included, but again, this is another really solid one, maybe slightly slimmer. Moving into the organizational layout, which is really where this bag shines and has always been one of my favorites. You have a lot of pockets all throughout. On the front, you have this simple zippered pocket that's gonna be a great spot for any smaller items that you wanna grab quickly. So in here, I just tossed in a little collapsible comb and then some medicine that I like to have with me when I'm traveling abroad. Beyond that, not a whole lot going on here, just a nice amount of space. Next up along the front, the Dop Kit has this nice zippered area that opens fully flat so you can easily see what's on the inside. And then on the flap, you have a few elastic bands that are gonna be great for holding larger and longer items. So in here, I have just a toothbrush and then my razor. These have been upgraded a little bit. They feel bigger than the ones on the original Dop Kit. And so this may be great for holding an electric toothbrush or an electric razor if you like to travel with those. You have a little bit more flexibility and it's nice that you have this flap at the bottom to prevent items from either sliding out and to also just keep them a little bit cleaner. And then on the back of this compartment, you have this little zippered area that's gonna be great for smaller items that you don't want getting lost. So in here, I just tossed in a little travel floss and then a nail clipper. I also have some tweezers. So again, just smaller kind of miscellaneous items. The mesh here has been upgraded a little bit. This is a mesh that Air has been using in their newer lines of bags, and this feels great. I love how elastic this is in case you have items that are a little bit of an odd shape. So nice amount of space here. You know, I, I, I like keeping everything a little bit more separate as it just makes it easier to find, especially when I have that extra bit of space in a dot kit of this size. And then on the back, you have the main compartment, which, you know, has plenty of space for those larger items that you might need to carry with you for your you know, conditioner, your shampoo. And so you have some nice elastic bands on one side of this that are gonna fit a variety of size bottles that you might wanna carry with you. In here, I just have a little contact lens solution, travel size shaving cream, and then I also have a travel size shampoo. And the bands do a pretty good job of keeping everything in place. They are maybe a little bit bigger than the items that I would normally travel with. So I noticed that they kind of slid around, but it's still nice to have these to just kind of keep everything from falling into chaos. And then on the back of this compartment, you have two additional elastic slip pockets that have that same kind of mesh that we saw in the zippered area on the front. And so I like how much space these provide, again, to just keep everything a little bit more organized. And this one I just tossed in a little container that I used with some pomade. And then I also have a travel size deodorant that I tossed in there. And then beyond that, not much else going on. You have a nice amount of space in the middle for other items that you wanna to toss in. Or if you're traveling internationally and you need to place your liquids into a clear plastic bag, you can maybe just toss that in here. So I like that it gives you enough volume to organize everything in the way that you want. And then one last thing that I'll call out, which I always love, about Air's bags, this is something that I'm glad they didn't lose. And just simple touches like this are what make the dot kit so nice to use. On the outside, you have this little toothbrush holder. So when you're at your hotel on the countertop, you don't have to rest your toothbrush somewhere dirty, it keeps it in place, it allows it to dry. So really love that little touch here. And overall, this is still just one of my favorite dot kits of all time. I love all the upgrades that have been made and how it still works to give you plenty of space, but still pack into a smaller bag when needed. So if you're just looking for a stylish and durable dot kit, this is gonna be one of the best options that you can check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Travel Sling 2 and the Dop Kit over the past week. And you can currently purchase these on air sites starting at about 45 to $50 for the Dop Kit and then $115 for the Travel Sling 2. And considering the features and build quality that these items have to offer, these feel like reasonable prices and they also compare well to other similar items in these price ranges. And so if you're curious about other sling bags that may be worth checking out, I would definitely recommend taking a look at the Metro Runner from Green Room 136. That one's gonna be a little bit smaller than this. It can't hold a laptop and it has more of a tactical vibe, but it has a great build quality. It's really comfortable. It actually has a pretty nice organizational layout for being such a small sling bag. So if you're looking for something super minimal, that's gonna be a great option to take a look at. I would also recommend checking out the Dayfair sling, which has a nice amount of capacity and a really modern and minimal look, kind of similar to this one. It has a good organizational layout. It's gonna be able to hold a tablet. So if you're looking for something with kind of an in-between size, that'll be a great one to consider. 
And then another option I would recommend checking out would be something like the Mystery Ranch 3-Way Expandable Briefcase, which isn't a sling bag per se, but you can use it as a shoulder bag, a briefcase, or a backpack. It has, again, a great organizational layout, a solid build quality. Even though it's pretty minimal, it still has a little bit more of a tactical vibe, and that one can actually expand out to a larger capacity, so it's gonna be able to hold an impressive amount of stuff. And if you're like me and you still really like having backpack straps just because it's a little bit more comfortable, that one's gonna offer kind of the best of all worlds. With that being said, the Travel Sling 2 holds up really well against all those bags, and the Air Dump Kit, of course, has been one of my favorites for a long time, so it's great to see it get a little bit of an upgrade, and it holds up great against many of the other Dump Kits that we've featured in the past. And I'm curious to hear what you guys think of these new items from Air, and if there are any similar options that you think I should feature on the channel. As always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company again for sending the items for me to test out. And if you found this video helpful, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.